Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. Ah, uh, yeah, folks, it is time once again for the Grim Leftovers program, and I am Grimnir here to share it with you. Hopefully I got everything set right, but I may not have. That's all right. No big deal. <laughs> anyway, welcome, folks. Uh, we're live right now on reallibertymedia.com and uh, and on various other places that we that we go out to. Yeah, freedomsnetwork.com, uh, realliberty.org, uh, internet radio, uh, tune in. Oh, uh, Spreaker, that's right, we're broadcasting live on Spreaker, too. And, uh, oh, I, I don't know where else. Everywhere. We, we go everywhere. And if you look at the thing, it'll say it's live of last week's date, but don't worry about that. It'll get fixed in post. <laughs> so how the hell are y'all doing out there? Uh, uh, yeah, we got a bunch of great folks over here in the chat room. If you're not here on reallibertymedia.com or uh, tuned into the chat one way or the other, it's on irc.freenode.net, and it's pound pound real liberty media. And you can come on over here and join all the folks that are here and uh, have a good old time, uh, hopefully have a good old time, listening to whatever spewage I happen to spew. And I'm going to spew some. You can guarantee you that. Uh, let me remind everybody, though, that uh, right now we are in the midst of the annual RLM, Real Liberty Media, uh, f- fundraiser, donation drive. And uh, we could certainly use your help getting things keeping things uh, going here at reallibertymedia.com and we appreciate every little penny that gets thrown our direction so uh, you can do that right there on the front page of reallibertymedia.com there's a little donate button sitting up there and uh, so feel free feel free to jump on into that Um, anyway let me say hi to some of the folks over here in the chat we got the cowboy tech and the moose girl and miss kate and DC, Mr. Asmo, and Chalcedony, Chloe, and Echelon, and Gramsy, you out there, Grammy? Uh, we got uh, IB Don C, uh, Ponder Gonder, which uh, would be Vinny by some other name, uh, Miss Rain there, and uh, Rob Works, Mr. Rome's uh, Phantom, the Phantom, uh, Anti, and Anti Theocon Boat. Oh, Anti Theocon, that's an old name, Anti. All right, we got Beetle. We got Dakota, we got uh, Frumpy and Gromit and, 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 and Java Doctor and JJ's and Kozu and Ensign Dubois and uh, the Poxer group, the, the, the Triple Poxes right there and Mr. Sock Puppet and uh, Van Meter and also Vinny Testaverde is here. Yeah, you remember him. <laughs> you, you remember old Vinny, don't you? Uh, anyway, we're coming up real quick to the... 11th anniversary? I'm pretty sure it's the, uh, I think RLM was initially uh, registered in 2008 on February 21st, so we're coming up closer to that 11 years of Real Liberty Media and uh, we've had a great old time let me tell you, man, it's, it's been a fun ride and uh, let's hope we get another 11 out of this deal could happen, we'll see we'll see, coming up Anyway, uh, let, let's let's get to it. I got. Uh, if you're not familiar, though, uh, let me let me mention this real quick. If you're new to the Grim Leftovers program, uh, I, I do I do uh, I save a bunch of stories for our Friday night show. Myself and the Moose Girls Friday night show called Freakers Ball, and on Freakers Ball we cover various stories and such. But oftentimes uh, we, we we don't get to the uh, all the stories that I save. And, and so since that doesn't happen, I made this show so I could cover some of the other stories that I, I'd, I'd marked uh, for uh, that show, and we do them here. Now, soon enough, and it looks to me anyway, within a, a few weeks from now, it's possible that uh, I'll run out of leftover stories, or maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I, I'm into the, the January stories already. So um, it, it, the the gap is closing from where I was. I used to have like 120 stories backlogged in in my my read later thing, save for read later deal. Um, now I'm down to about half of that. 
So uh, we'll, we'll see as as we move forward uh, what 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 direction this show may go. It may just go to you know fresh live stories. I may just come up with something else to talk about other than than the goofball news that's going on in the goofball world. But uh, we'll we'll see we'll see when we get there. Anyway, we're gonna start off with a, with a little story here from the DailyMail.com, which was posted on uh, January 11th, 2019. So, but a month ago, not even a month ago. All right, uh, packs of robot dogs. You heard me right. Packs of robot dogs could soon ride around in driverless vans and be deployed to drop packages on your doorstep. I, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't really... I, I, I like dogs, and I like robots. I, I don't know that I want a robot dog coming walking up to my door, though. Uh, that could be, uh, could be something that I, I may not be in favor of. Anyway, uh, Continental, which is a, a company, uh, unveiled a robot delivery dog and a driverless van at the con- consumer electronics show in Las Vegas, CES. The robo-dogs would ride around in the van, jump out, and drop off packages. In a demo, the robot climbed upstairs, rang the doorbell, and delivered a parcel. Uh, if you're going to, like, you know, treat a robot dog, why... I, is there like some kind of like an electronic milk bone or something that you hand off to them? I, I, I don't know. A- any, any Biotics, that's the name of the company, A-N-Y Biotics, uh, earlier showed off its Annie Mall, Annie Mall, <laughs> bought opening doors and riding elevators. Yeah, I don't really want any malls opening my door. Anyway, uh, so yeah, the, the next package delivered could be by a robot dog. German automotive firm Continental unveiled a concept delivery system at the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas that imagines four-legged robot dogs hopping out of driverless delivery vans to ferry packages straight to your doorstep. Continental has also partnered with uh, with Antibiotics Robotics uh, now for its quadrupedal Robots that can open doors and ride at elevators to develop the concept. Continental designed a robo-taxi specifically for the delivery dogs to ride around in. Called the Cube, it's a pod, pod-shaped, pod I'm not sure what that means, pod-shaped, uh, autonomous van that can carry one or multiple delivery robots at a time. Once the van arrives at its destination, it will send out a robot dog through the back door of the car to drop the packages off at your doorstep. At CES, Continental had a demo showing just what the robot would look like. Uh, The robot dog was able to jump out of the van, clamber over a garden in the front of a model home, and make its way up a set of stairs to the door. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, uh, th- that that that'd be another issue. Uh, I, I mean, do, do you need a baggie for that? <laughs> oh man. Uh, anyway, from there it slides the package off of its back and onto the front porch before ringing the doorbell with one of its arms. Dogs have arms, legs. I'm gonna go legs. All right. After delivering the package, it was even able to do a little dance. Dancing robot dogs. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, Continental does believe somehow that the concept system could make the last mile delivery even more efficient in the future. Uh, I, I watched the video of these things and they, they weren't really fast or anything. Uh, it seems to be a human would still be a little faster or if they uh, put a little extra juice in that dog, I suppose. Uh, the last mile portion of delivery uh, process encompasses how the package gets from the warehouse to the person's doorstep. With the help of the robot delivery, Continental's vision for seamless mobility can extend right to your doorstep. Our vision of cascaded robot delivery leverages a driverless vehicle to carry delivery robots 
creating an efficient transport team. The dog ate my package. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Sock Puppet's got something here for me. An image saying it's a dog van. Continent. Oh, I see. I was picturing something more scooby dooish than that. You know, wouldn't that be better if a Scooby-Doo ro robot dog? <laughs> oh, anyway, there's more to that story should you care to read it and, and some videos and such things in that link uh, of the actual robot doing some of that delivery for you. The Annie Mall. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh, just beware, beware of robot dog. That, that'd be a nice sign to have on your uh, on your front gate. Beware of robot dog. <laughs> uh, well, that was fun, but this one's not so fun. Yeah, government, they're there to protect you, right? Maybe not so much. U.S. approved of arrival of thousands of child brides from foreign countries. Yep. The United States has approved thousands of requests by men to bring child brides and adolescent brides from other countries. The approvals are legal. Legal. Not that they're right. Not that you should want to do that. But they are legal uh, because the Immigration and Nationality Act does not set minimum age requirements. A new U.S. Senate report called How the U.S. Immigration System Encourages Child Marriage. They want you to marry a child. They want you to marry a little girl. Is raising questions about whether our country's immigration system actually does encourage encourage child marriage well that's the way they've got it set up you could bet people are going to do it if they find out about the fact that they can which um, I guess this article here would uh, clue them in on that if they didn't already know Naila Amin grew up in New York City she's a dual citizen of the United States of Pakistan where she was forced to marry her adult cousin when she was 13 years old Imagine someone is beating you and raping you every day of your life, even telling you, Hey, put my socks on me, Amin said. He treated me like a little slave. Amin said her 26-year-old husband saw her as his passport to the United States. I was his lottery ticket out of Pakistan, she said. Amin eventually got out of the marriage, but said the ordeal cost her her childhood. I, I know my potential could have been so much more, she says but they ruined my life. Some lawmakers and advocates for the uh, victims, and here at least they're calling them victims, which is good, says the United States immigration system may be unintentionally enabling forced marriages. A loophole in immigration law has paved the way for over 8,000 child marriages, uh, child marriages mostly to girls brought in from outside the country, according to the Senate report. This is this is this is your government, um, as 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 they they go out there and they uh, gripe about or, or or make a big noise anyway uh, about other countries and 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 their humanitarian failings, and then they do this and then they have this, and, and this has probably been the law for forever, um, uh, you know it, it's it, it's. Uh, it's it's a disgusting, disgusting thing, um, that that goes on and is being taken advantage of, no doubt. Um, of course, it, like I said, it's here eight thousand child marriages. It doesn't say what time frame that that encompasses, um, but uh, e either way, this this should not be going on um, in, in any way. And, and I thought there was some I thought there was some other rule about not marrying cousins except in Arkansas in Arkansas it's okay 
and and of course marrying a 13 year old cousin in Arkansas is okay but in other places you know where, where they have electricity and, and indoor plumbing it's not supposed to go on sorry Arkansas <laughs> It's a sad story. It, it is, actually. Um, and so while they allow that the, to, to go on in that manner, if you, if you, well, hang on a second, I need a sip of water. If you have a child and, and she says, hey, I want to make a little extra money here and there. Got any chores I can do? Well, that could be a problem, especially if maybe you don't have chores, but your neighbor has chores, and 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 the kid uh, wants to go and do chores at the neighbor's, make a few dollars, whatever. Yeah, reason.com. Mom tells her neighbor tells neighbors her nine-year-old daughter could help them do chores. Cops arrive with child labor concerns. Apparently the ad, apparently there was an ad, uh, generated multiple phone calls from paranoid neighbors thinking I was using my child as a slave. A mother in Woodenville, Washington, posted an advertisement on behalf of her nine-year-old daughter, Sarah, who was willing, able, ready to do housework, laundry, dishes, etc. for neighborhood moms who needed help. Six hours later, the cops arrived to make sure Sarah wasn't being abused or worked to death. Oh yeah, how could I forget Alabama I mixed it there with Arkansas? <laughs> well, you know, most of them southern states could probably qualify, but I like to pick it on Arkansas just because of any. <laughs> anyway, that's according to uh, Christina Bihar, Behar, Behar, uh, Sarah's mom, who wrote the letter about the incident. Uh, apparently, the ad generated multiple phone calls. Um, yeah, they, they, neighbors, neighbors thinking she was using her child as a slave. They didn't bother to try and talk to the child. They, they didn't do any investigation whatsoever. They saw the ad, and 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 they freaked out. And rather, I mean, it's their neighbor, right? They they could have just talked to the neighbor, talked to the little girl. Yeah. But no, that was that was not that was not the way they dealt with it. This should spark some discussion of what we lose when we treat kids as incompetent or endangered, endangered, even though they're quite ready to take on some responsibility in the real world. Uh, the government doesn't want your children taking on responsibility. They don't want you taking on responsibility. They want to be the parent of you. They want to be your master, and you can only do as you're told uh, by them, and so your child should only be able to do as you're allowed to, as they tell you you're allowed to. <laughs> anyway, uh, as the uh, New York Times piece on the relentless demands of modern parenting made clear, Many of us, wealthy or not, spend a whole lot of time and cash on our kids' extracurricular enrichment. Let's remember that making some money, dealing with some challenges, and assuming some responsibility are very enriching childhood activities, which uh, should be allowed. Now, not that uh, to say that some parents would not take advantage of their children, um, but you got you got you got to uh, allow them to to go forward with it uh, to a degree the child child children are not stupid they will speak up if they are being abused i guarantee uh anyway they got uh behar's letter here talking to lenore which is the uh, uh, author of this piece here on on the reason.com dear lenore my husband and i have three kids aged 9 7 and 5 We've always tried to raise them to be independent and let them play outside for hours in our family-friendly suburban neighborhood outside of Seattle. Walk alone to the neighbors and have taught them how to cook, clean, do laundry, and other household chores that we deem age-appropriate. 
inspired by your book, Free Range Kids, I posted an ad in our neighborhood website advertising my daughter as a mother's helper. Moms asked uh, me for her asked me for her help, and I figured I would take your advice and reach out to others in my neighborhood that I may not know. This uh, that this was the ad. Uh, mother's helper. Hello, my almost ten-year-old daughter is available as a mother's helper. She is the oldest of three and quite capable. She can fold and put away laundry, sweep, set tables, clean dishes, take out the trash, make beds, vacuums. And make light meals and, and keep your kiddo busy. We are a homeschool family, so she has a flexible schedule. Please message me if you're interested in meeting with us. Six hours later, the sheriff was knocking at the door. He was embarrassed and apologetic, which is odd for a sheriff, but said he had to do a welfare check to make sure I wasn't running a sweatshop. Apparently, the ad generated multiple phone calls from paranoid neighbors thinking I was using my child as a slave. <sighs> anyway. Letting kids do some work for money isn't making them into slaves. It's making them into adults or working, helping, going towards them being adults. That is not a crime. It should not be a crime and and if these parents uh, these nosy neighbors want to find out the answers just ask don't be a bunch of annoying little pussies and call the cops on people what the frick is going on there <laughs> I got a cat meowing outside my window <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this one from uh, New York Post on January 14th, 2019. I feel like I shared this maybe on Freakers, but I, I don't recall if I did. If I did, I, I hadn't uh, cleared the little marker out of my list, so it was still in there. Uh, yeah, no, see, that's not it. Go Gooberzilla saying in the chat, basically pimping out her own daughter as labor. No, it's not. Her daughter asked to be allowed to do some work for other people to make a few bucks. Uh, so, uh, and and the mom wants to, you know, get get her kid to learn responsibility, and and to grow up a little bit, which all parents I would think would want for their children, so they don't wind up little leeches on society as they get to a further on age and they've never done anything other than to sit around playing Game Boy and eat potato chips. I don't, I don't know what the hell they do. Anyway, <laughs> this, it's a good thing. You, you should, I mean, if you have a child and, and the child is, is willing to do some stuff like that, they, they, they should do it. Uh, so, yeah, exactly, Goober. It's been happening to boys and young men for centuries, and, and it should. It should. It's a good thing to learn how to actually work and to help other people and to... And, 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 uh, learn skills as you do it and, and and granted these are you know menial skills that you just need to maintain your house but uh, be that as it may the kid's nine years old so it, it's a good thing anyway so back to this story here <laughs> skin crawling footage shows spiders raining from the sky yeah this is not Ziggy Stardust and these spiders are not from Mars Anyway, chilling footage has emerged, appearing to show hundreds of spiders raining down from the sky in Brazil. A young boy who filmed the incredible moment said it left him stunned and scared as the arachnids floated in the air. The video shows spiders clustered in the air at Espirito, 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 Espirito Santo do Dorado. I shouldn't even bother with the... Uh, Spanish accent because I don't have one. Anyway, about 155 miles northeast of Sao Paulo uh, reported the news.com.au Locals said it looked like the sky was raining with spiders. However, although the spiders look like they are falling, they are actually moving atop a huge canopy-like web. 
which has to be supported by something, right? I guess the air. Uh, experts say it's uh, typical for the region, uh, when it's hot and humid, to form a temporary shared web. Um, I don't know how to say this name. Somebody, Pedro Martinelli Fonasca, filmed uh, one of the videos at his grandparents' farm in a rural area in southern Minas Gerais state. Uh, Christina Ann Rames, a biologist at Butano Institute at UOL, said the spiders are not dangerous. Can you eat them? That would be a question for me. Can you eat them? Because, you know, um, if they're f just falling down in big old clumps like that, you, you might, you might want to, they might be good food. Anyway, the 14-year-old who filmed the scene, who left stunned by the eight-legged invaders, especially when he when one fell inside the car he was in. Uh, the student's grandmother uh, told a local newspaper there were many more webs and spiders than you can see in the video. Where were they from? Brazil. Uh, Goober, uh, they were, these are Brazilians. This happened in Brazil. Um, we've seen this before, always at dusk on days when it's been really hot. Another biologist explained, it's a tactic to increase the area for catching food, usually insects. Uh, silk threads act as parachutes, so the rain of spiders, it's also called ballooning. Uh, the footage was uploaded on Facebook and YouTube last week, whatever, from whenever this was uh, done, and has since been viewed over 32,000 times. Uh, you, you can check out the video right here. I'll give you the link right now. The links, all these links, by the way, will also be in the post-show Grim Leftovers blog. So uh, look for that. Uh, maybe this evening. Probably this evening. We'll see. <laughs> Depends how I feel afterward. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I, I don't think I'd want to be walking around outside uh, with with a bunch of uh, spiders coming down on my head. Um, they say they're not dangerous, but you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want a bunch of creepy crawlies creeping and crawling upon me. <laughs> oh man, that's what we got here. Oh yeah, this is kind of interesting. I I, I say. Uh, from thegatewaypundit.com. This was on January 15th, so we're, we're getting closer. Uh, by Cassandra Fairbanks. Thanks, Cassandra! All right. Annual DerbyCon Hacker Conference is ending because SJW and feminist negativity, polarization, and disruption. SJW and feminist negativity, polarization, and disruption. The organizers of the popular Louisville Tech Conference, DerbyCon, have announced that 2019 will be the final year uh, that they will hold the event due to social justice warriors ruining everyone's fun as usual. You damn SJWs always ruining everybody's fun. In a lengthy statement, the DerbyCon team explained that they are ending their run because of the vocal group of people creating neg negativity, polarization, and disruption with the primary intent of self-promotion to advance a career for personal gain or for more social media followers, individuals that would have us be the judge, jury, and executioner for people that they have had issues with outside the conference that has nothing to do with the conference itself. They just come in there and, and stir up a bunch of crap. And and, the, and the, these people at this, at this uh, conference just said, screw it. They want to have some place to go and mess up? Well, it ain't going to be here because we're just going to stop. We don't need you guys. Over the past couple of years, there have been a number of incidents in which authoritarian social justice warriors... They're so far from warriors. How do they even get warriors tacked onto that? Social justice pussies uh, and members of the left disrupted tech conferences to go after the people with different political views. 
Oh, you don't think exactly like you. You're you're being mean to me. You're aggressing against me because you think differently. <laughs> Despite the fact that politics has little to do with these events. It's got nothing to do with these events. It's a hacker conference. Anyway, at last year's conference, a woman named Lindsay Ledford had a total meltdown because someone wrote the word boobies on a whiteboard and was, uh, <laughs> that was asking people what helps them deal with stress. Yeah, boobies. That helps people. Uh, that helps me deal with stress. Yeah, yeah. And then somebody wrote underneath the boobies comment, "Boobies, me too." <laughs> but this woman got all upset. She went. She, she went on to Twitter, Lindsay Ledford. She says, "You know what? What doesn't help me deal with stress? Men joking about fucking sexual assault." All the guy said was boobies. He didn't mention any kind of sexual assault, but you take from the word boobies that somebody's going to come and assault you. Well, let me tell you right now, I'm looking at your image right here, and I'm thinking you're probably safe from any kind of sexual assault. Of course, that's just my opinion. I'm sure many men or women or other in-betweens uh, find you quite the, the thing, Miss Lindsay. <laughs> yes, indeed, Goober, they do bring shame to the word warrior. Anyway, Ledford didn't stop there. She also complained to DerbyCon sponsors because the conference had beard combs as swag, but nothing specific for a woman. Now, let me just say this. A beard comb is a multi-purpose comb. You can use it for your beard and or mustache. If if you don't have a beard or mustache, maybe you want to comb your underarm hair or your, your crotch hair or the hair on your head. Uh, it, it can be used for anything. Just because it's called a beard comb doesn't mean that's the only use for the comb. <laughs> anyway, she then whined about the popular hack naked shirts from the Security Weekly podcast because they feature a mudflap girl. <laughs> now we're not talking about we're not talking about spinal tap here and big bottoms. Not that mudflap girl. We they she means the mudflap girls that are on the the mudflaps on the back of semis where they got that kind of a chrome silhouette of a girl on the mudflaps. Not not like I said, not 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 the spinal tap thing. <laughs> anyway, these shirts are pretty much a staple at all InfoSec conferences. Uh, a a anyway, the, she she also posted up a, a, a oh, no, this is somebody else, Odd Job, somebody named Odd Job, and said, "Look at these buff boys who stopped by the Circle City Con booth, and, and they're wearing hack naked uh, wife beaters, wife beaters." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, T-shirts, you know, the sleeveless T-shirts there. Um. <laughs> I need another sip of water here. Well, <laughs> okay, Van Meter's got a good point. She's seen some of those girls, and they, they need beard combs. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> anyway, uh, in another incident at last year's Hope Hacker Conference, Leftists began demanding that a man in a MAGA hat be removed from the venue. They screamed and shouted at the attendee, claiming he was a Nazi. Oh, you dirty Nazi and your MAGA hat, and demanding that security removed him. When the security guards refused and defended the attendee after someone attempted to steal his hat, uh, high-profile social, social justice pussies hopped on Twitter and went to the activist press to, press to continue causing problems. These leftist tantrums have made DerbyCon too miserable to run for the organizers. Uh, I'll let you read the balance of that for yourself. I think you get the idea of what's going on there. <laughs> it's just... Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Vinny, <laughs> go on, go on to you 
YouTube, Vinny, and, and look up uh, Spinal Tap, Big Bottoms. Listen to the song. You'll know where the mud flaps come from. <laughs> oh, one second, one second. Sorry about that. Had to, had to cough. All right. From the Awaking Times on January 5th, 2019. WakingTimes.com. Uh, UN staffer warns that 5G is a war on humanity. Is she wrong? I'm going to say no. I've read a lot of stuff about 5G. I'm not... Uh, not had any personal experience that I'm aware of unless they've already swapped out the cell towers near me to make them 5G. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't know if they have. I, I don't know how I would find that out either. Um, but uh, whatever. I, I, th I think this woman is quite correct. The first eight months of World War II with no fighting was called the Phony War. Using millimeter waves as a fifth generation or 5G wireless communication technology is a phony war of another kind. This phony war is also silent, but this time shots are being fired in the form of laser-like beams of electromagnetic radiation, EMR, from banks of thousands of tiny antennas, and almost no one in the firing line knows they are being silently, seriously, and irreparably injured. Yeah, there you go, Vinny. Um, in the first instance, 5G is likely to make uh, make people electro-hypersensitive. That's, that's, that's quite the phrase there. Electro-hypersensitive. Because it was sitting in front of two big computer screens or perhaps it was sitting in front of two big computer screens uh, for many of the 18 years I worked at the UN that made me EHS, electro-hypersensitive, uh, when the office at Vienna installed the powerful Wi-Fi cell phone access points designed to serve large public areas in narrow metal-walled corridors throughout the Vienna International Center in December 2015. I was ill continuously for seven months. I did my best for two and a half years to alert the UN Staff Union, Administration, and Medical Service to the danger, the health, uh, to the health of the UN staff of, of EMR from these access points. But I was ignored. That's why in May 2018, I took the issue to the UN Secretary General, Antonio Gutierrez. He is a physicist and an electrical engineer and lectured on telecommunication signals early in his career, yet asserted that he knew nothing about this. He undertook to ask the WHO, World Health Organization, to look into it, but seven months later, those public access points remain in place. I received no replies to my many follow-up emails. As a result, I welcome the opportunity to join the effort uh, to publish an international appeal to stop 5G on Earth and in space, because it was clear to me that despite having been 43 earlier scientific appeals, v very few people understood or cared about the dangers of EMR. My experience as an editor could help ensure that the new 5G appeal, including the issue of beaming 5G from space, beaming 5G from space was clear, comprehensive, explanatory, and accessible to the non-scientist. The international appeal to stop 5G on Earth, you're not going to stop 5G. Let me, let me just say this now. They, they've, they've, they've gone way too far down that road. There's way too much invested in it. They, you are not going to stop 5G. It is going forward come hell or high water. And if you start talking out about it, you are going to be labeled as a loony, a crackpot, a tinfoil hat-wearing conspiracy theorist. Hey, I just described myself. Anyway, <laughs> so so the international appeal to stop 5G on Earth and space, space is fully referenced, citing over 100 scientific papers among the tens of thousands of biological effects of EMR 
published over the last 80 years. Meister Brown, don't, don't be messaging me while I'm on the air. <laughs> he probably doesn't know I'm on the air and he's messaging me. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, having spent years editing uh, UN documents dealing with space, why is this popping up? Uh, I know that outer space is hotly contested geopolitically and any untoward event involving a military satellite risks triggering a catastrophic response. Uh, all right. I don't know what he's talking about over there. I don't have time to read that. <laughs> Let me just type here in the chat so he understands why I'm not answering him. All right. <laughs> Where was I? Okay. Uh, having spent years editing uh, editing UN documents dealing with space, I know outer space is hotly contested geopolitically and uh, any untoward event involving a military satellite risks triggering a catastrophic response. Uh, space law, space law, got that? Space law is so inadequate. Uh, just one example is the complexity of the space liability law. What the hell? Space law, space liability law, that we could really uh, call the Earth orbits a new Wild West. China caused international consternation in 2007 when it demonstrated the anti-satellite weapon by destroying its own satellite. Space debris, not cosmic debris, just space debris, <laughs> is the main concern among the spacefaring nations with a so-called Kessler syndrome uh, positioning a cascade of space debris uh, that that could make it make the Earth's orbit unusable for thousands of years. I need to sneeze, but instead I just sniff. All right. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll let you read the rest of this for yourself. It, it's kind of technical, and it gets into some deep stuff. But understand, 5G is a given at this point. Uh, 5, 5G is is here actually already in some places not everywhere yet but it, but it's here and they're not going to back down from it they're not going to stop it they don't care what effect it may have on you uh, I, I don't know what kind of protections at this point that we have from 5G but uh, what, whatever is not there presently some protections will come forward uh, as, as things go along uh, be, because people as dumb as they are are actually very smart <laughs> the individual let me put it this way the individual is very smart in cases many cases a lot of cases I don't know what percentage that is but the uh, group of people are not real smart so the, the, the group reading whatever the clap, the corporate lame ass propaganda puts out about 5G, telling you that anybody that doesn't like 5G is just a nutbag, which, of course, is coming. Um, yeah. So, there you go. Is this the right one? I guess this is the right one. <laughs> so, he talked about hackers or hackers conferences and, and social justice pussies. And then we talked about 5G and the satellites and the space being what it is. And now we have this from alienufosightings.com. <laughs> Brit hacker discovers evidence of a U.S. space warship fleet. What? <laughs> a British hacker, famed for the biggest ever breach of top secret U.S. computers, has claimed to have seen evidence of an American space warship force. And Goober's always saying, where's the spaceships? Well, here you go. In an extraordinary interview, Gary McKinnon claims to have stumbled upon a secret list of up to to 10 space warships 
after breaking into the NASA computer database. He claims it points to a secret American space program run by the United States Navy. A 49-year-old has been facing a 10-year fight against extradition to the, uh, the, 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 the states, the states for hacking NASA, U.S. military, and Pentagon computers in the biggest breach of, it, of its kind in history. Hey, hang on. I, 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 I gotta blow my nose here. Hang on a second. Sorry about that. <laughs> it was itching. It was itching something bad. Anyway. <laughs> Um, no, not aliens, uh, Goober. These are uh, Earthians. Earthicans. Uh, anyway, now in his first in-depth interview, Mr. Mc Mr. Kinnon uh, claims to have seen details suggesting the United States is preparing for real-life Star Wars. I, I don't know how many of you ever watched the uh, television series Stargate SG-1. But they were building uh, these these big ass uh, starships um, for a long time, and nobody knew about them. Uh, you know, in the show, you know, it's, it's just a show, but uh, still could could explain some things. And they, they even did a show in, in the Stargate show where where people found out about the aliens and the Stargate and the ships and everything like that. And what they did was they made a a show mocking the idea. Uh, a sci-fi style show mocking the idea of the program so that if anybody came came and said hey hey we saw this no you just saw the tv show that was on the tv show that's what you saw that's why you're thinking that that we've got all this advanced technology yeah <laughs> plausible deniability anyway he said i found an excel spreadsheet which said non-terrestrial officers and I thought, oh my God, that's incredible. It had ranks and names. It had tabs for material transfer between ships. I thought, well, let's try to cut out the conventional explanations. I searched for the term, but it was nowhere at all. It's not a standard thing in the military at all. I, I took that to be, they must have ships based in space. That uh, the, the name started with USS, which implies Navy. The ships of the United States have USS before the ship's name in the same way as the Royal Navy's have uh, vessels have HMS in front of theirs. And uh, he's got kind of like a mock-up of the, uh, the spreadsheet here for you. Um, Reagan era, well that's right, Ronnie Reagan was a, was a big space dude. <laughs> anyway, the exclusive interview on the UFO channel, Uf there's a UFO channel? I didn't know that. Um, Mr. Mr. McKinnon uh, reveals in detail for the first time what he found during his two-year hack spree. Uh, Mr. McKinnon managed to gain access to computers for several months without detection. Yeah, that's a nice uh, security system you got there. And caught sight of an image that he believes could have been real proof of an alien life. U.S. officials wanted to put the Asperger sufferer on trial for accessing secret files from his London bedroom. He could have faced 60 years jail and his family would have been suicidal or would have been suicided. Uh, you gotta, gotta get that terminology right. Anyway, McKinnon had lost all possible court appeals and could have been sent to America at any time. But in 2012, Home Secretary at that point in time, Theresa May, now a PM over there, uh, blocked his removal to the states on medical grounds. She accepted uh, McKinnon is accused of serious crimes, but he was clearly ill with depression of being uh, and being extradited would breach his human rights. Do you think the uh, CIA or FBI or DOJ would care about uh, your human rights? I'm pretty sure not. Anyway, they've got a, a set of videos here in, in this that you can check out four videos of uh, interviews with with Mr. Gary McKinnon over there. 
and you can find out more about these uh, this space force and you also got to imagine that it, it's quite possible that by the time Trump announced there was going to be a space force the space force was already built and ready and in the air <laughs> because you know having the United States military forces in over 160 countries just isn't enough. That's not enough to be occupying 160 different countries. You gotta occupy space too. <laughs> oh, come on, nose. All right. That's, that, that is the correct number, though. The United States military has forces in over 160 countries, and the Pentagon is um, hiding the numbers. Imagine that. <laughs> the U.S. has 95% of the world's foreign military bases, with personnel based in more than 160 countries. The Pentagon is not going to tell you what's going on, leaving hundreds of outposts out of its official reports. Uh, the editor's note here in this article, which is on um, grazy1project.com gray, gray Zone Gray Zone 1 Gray Zone Project, that's what it's called Jeez, I got it Gray Zone Project.com uh, Max Blumenthal is the, is the editor And the editor's note is Nick Terse reports in Tom Dispatch that the United States Department of Defense is operating hundreds of of off-the-book bases absent from the official roles. The Pentagon lists in its official property portfolio 4,775 sites, including 514 overseas outposts in 45 countries. But Terse points out that number excludes hundreds of known U.S. military bases and numerous nations. The DOD also publicly acknowledges that it has personnel in more than 160 countries on all seven continents. Uh, the annual cost of deploying these U.S. military personnel abroad and operating these foreign bases approaches $150 billion per year. Oh, that's a highly conservative number. Um, I, I'm going to go many more times than that $150 billion. Yes, indeed. Um, anyway. Uh, the United States has 95% of the world's total number of foreign military bases. And scho scholar David Vinny, well, it's spelled Vine. Anyway, and scholar David Vinny tells Terse the secrecy is mostly to prevent domestic debate about money, danger, and death involved, as well as to avoid diplomatic tensions and international inquiries. Ah, bases. Bases everywhere. Except in the Pentagon's report. Yeah, the U.S. military is finally withdrawing, or not, from its base at Al Tanf. Or not. You know, that place that the Syrian government long claimed was a training ground for the ISIS fighters? Yeah, the very ISIS fighters that the United States trained, funded, and armed? Yeah, those, those ISIS fighters. Huh. Yeah, I don't really think they were trying to run from them. Anyway, the, the land quarter just inside Syria, uh, near both Iraq and Jordanian borders, uh, that Russia has called a terrorist hotbed while floating the idea of jointly administering it with the U.S. Oh, boy. Uh, the, the location of the camp where hundreds of U.S. Marines joined Special Operation Forces last year an outpost that the United States officials claimed was the key to not only defeating ISIS, but also, according to the to General Joseph Voltel, the commander of the U.S. forces in the Middle East, to countering the uh, to countering the malign activities that Iran and their various proxies and surrogates would like to pursue. You know that Al Tanf. Now, reading through that. Uh, first bit there, that paragraph. I feel like I need to put up one of those things on the wall, you know, where they got a bunch of
push pins and they got strings tied going from one to the other pointing out this this connects this to that 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 to that uh, like like you see it on uh, like some crazy people's uh, things or, or cops cops which are also crazy people uh, they, they have up on the wall trying to make sense out of, out of the whole scenario but the thing is there's no real sense to be made out of it and it all comes from the same source and that's your your good old USA they're the ones doing all this stuff but then they point fingers left right and, and everywhere else uh, to, to try and make you think oh no these are the Syrians these are the ISIS people we don't know anything about them except for their terrorists oh no it's it it's it's Iran it's 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 Palestine it's uh, whoever and they, they make all these different accusations and uh, and, and and they go in through a day and they bomb people uh, after they've made their accusations but as it comes down to the real source of it it's all the same people it's all your United States it's all your Department of Defense CIA the same group basically um, anyway uh, within hours of uh, President Trump's announcement of a withdrawal of US forces from this area equipment at that base are was already being inventoried for removal and just like that arguably the most important American garrison in Syria was uh, maybe being struck from the Pentagon's books well let me let me stop reading this article for you to get to this other article for you which is new from today uh, because well I just have to <laughs> because of what's well, from yesterday but uh, still the tie in the tie-in could not be any better. From ZeroHedge.com Death knell for Syria pullout. We have to protect Israel, says Trump. What? What? We have to protect Israel, says Trump. <laughs> After approaching two months of talk, of a full and immediate U.S. troop withdrawal from Syria, first ordered by President Trump on December 19th, which was predictably met with swift and fierce pushback from the Beltway Hawks, including, in some cases, his own advisor, it now appears that the death knell has sounded on the prior, quote, complete and, quote, rapid drawdown order. Trump said in a CBS Face the Nation interview, this weekend that some unspecified number of U.S. troops will remain in the region, mostly in Iraq, with possibly, with undoubtedly, let me change that word, uh, some still in Syria, in order to protect Israel. In what appears to be a significant backtrack, <laughs> you think? The, not that it's any surprise. Not that we all knew when he announced a pullout from Syria, it was not going to happen. <laughs> oh, but his, his prior insistence upon uh, on, on absolute withdrawal. Yeah, yeah, he, he, was, he was lying then, he's lying now, and he'll be lying tomorrow. Yep. Uh, it says, we're going to be there and we're going to be staying. We have to protect... Israel. What now? Why? He replied when pressed by CBS reporter Margaret Brennan. We have to protect other things that we have, but but we're yeah 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 they'll be coming back in a matter of time. Yeah, once they're dead, they'll be coming home in a body bag, as the uh, film name from uh, the film inside the film True Romance. Anyway, um, he did note. Ultimately, some will be coming home. Oh, yeah, ultimately they will, like I said, in a body bag. Uh, look, we're protecting the world. Well, wait. Now, is Trump not the one that said that the United States is not the world police? That we're not supposed to be protecting the world? Yeah. Enjoy the show. Anyway, he added, we're spending money, uh, more money than anybody's ever spent in history. By a lot. Yeah, whose money are you spending exactly? And do those people whose money you're stealing and spending approve? I'm going to go ahead and say no. Trump's slow drift and change in tune on the subject of a promised 
rapid exit uh, comes after Israel officials led by Bibi alongside neocon allies, allies in Washington argued that some 200 U.S. troops in Syria's southeast desert along the Iraqi border and its 55-kilometer deconfliction zone at al Tanf are the last line of defense against Iranian, Iranian <laughs> expansion in Syria. Iran is Syria's friend. If Iran wants to expand into Syria, Syria says, okay, you can have this chunk of land here, this, that chunk of land there. Come on down. Whose business is it other than Iran and Syria's? Nobody's. But Trump goes on to say, I want to be able to watch Iran. Iran is a real problem. No, they're not. <laughs> they are not. They are not a problem. Did I give you that other link? I did. Let me give you this link, too. Um, I was going to do another story for you, but I, I can see I'm already over my time. Um, and, and, and so I will not do that other story for you. But uh, I will give you the link to it, and I'll include the link into the post-show blog. Uh, b b because I had it already up here, and so meaning um, I've already deleted it from my, my listings. Let me put this over here first. Do -do 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 -do. Okay. Um, and that other story is about Google. Oh, yes, your, your buddy Google. How Google manipulated YouTube, research, YouTube search results to program, uh, you know, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to save this for either uh, Friday night on the Freakers or, or next week here. Um, I'll save that link. Yeah, but it, but it's about uh, Google making their their searches, search results, come back to point you in a way away from what you probably want to know. Um, so anyway, like I said, I'll, I'll save that because I I, I do want to. I do want to share it, and, and but the, the link will be in this in this week's uh, blog, so you can, you can look at it there uh, as as well. And I put it there. Did I put it there? Let me put it in the link into the chat. And you're gonna say, "Hey, I heard all about this." Yeah, I, I, I but I'm not gonna actually sit here and talk about it. Uh, you, you all know the evil of Google. Um, anyway, I'm out of time. I'm over my time for my for my show. Uh, let me remind you that tomorrow is is Flash somebody in a perfect world, possibly joined by Vinny um, at at uh, one Eastern, and then on Wednesday is uh, Grabby at her normal time, seven p.m. Eastern, in Grammy's rocket chair. Great show. Uh, hopefully her voice and and everything is doing okay, and she's feeling well and good and healthy. Um, then on Thursday evening at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern is Flash Somebody once again with his other show, 20% Off. And then on Friday, is, is a, it's a big day. We got, you got Viddy in a Ponder Gander show there at uh, 1 Eastern. I think it's 1 Eastern. I'm pretty sure, yeah. 1 Eastern. Grammy at 7. Uh, myself and the Moose Girl at 11 p.m. Eastern with the Frickers Ball. So uh, check all those show out shows out, and there's weekend shows to be to be looked at on RLM Radio. Uh, don't forget once again, it is the our Real Liberty Media annual donation fundraiser drive. So go to reallibertymedia.com, click on the the, the uh, donate button, and send a few bucks our way. We will appreciate it extremely. Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. I'll be back next week with another edition of Grim Leftovers. Have yourselves a great week. Peace.